Good afternoon, Nigerians. Good afternoon, distinguished members of the fourth estate of the realm. Uh, good afternoon, my fellow members of the National Working Committee of our great party, All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA. I have here my two deputy national chairmen, Uche Nokobu is there, the deputy national chairman, South. Elijah Adamu, Abdullahi Adamu is here, the national deputy national chairman, North. We have our national organizing secretary there, Barry Stephanie Berry. We have the national legal advisor here, Barrister. Uh, 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 the, the erudite uh, barrister, we'll call him on the name, Sly, Ezokemwa. Then we have here the deputy national auditor, Elder Chooks Achuse. We have also our governorship candidate in Benue State, Joseph Wire. And uh, we have a full house. We are happy to address Nigerians today. First of all, we thank God Almighty for his love, for his direction, for his protection all these years. We came into office on June 6, 2015 in a national convention held in Oka, Anambra State attended by 6,842 members of the, member of the National Convention. Uh, and uh, it was a very successful, a very peaceful National Convention. We rolled the drums out and we started work in earnest. And uh, by 2019, May 31, when we came for second term, we already set the party on a very solid footing. By that 2019, we already established a direction for our party, direction for growth and development. As you can see, this is the national headquarters of our party. We moved the party from a twin duplex at Wuse 2 into an edifice of our own. This complex is uh, seated on 4,000 square meters of land. And the complex is owned by our party, All Progressive Grand Alliance, 100%. And this is the only political party in Nigeria that owns an office of its own, 100%, not in a rented accommodation. So that's a huge achievement. And uh, the moment we moved into this place, the envy started, you know, usually success attracts envy. Uh, people started, uh, you know, working against the progress of the party, making frivolous attempts to, you know, remove this administration. But it has not worked for them. We have continued to grow in strength, in membership. And uh, that is why we call this press conference to show the world the truth about development in our party. Our progressive Grand Alliance, APGA, has never witnessed any crisis. The party has remained very, very peaceful. We have pr we produced the governor of Anambra State in 2017 in the person of Governor Willie Obiano. Then in 2021, we produced another governor in the person of Professor Chukwuma Soludo. It was during Soludo's, uh, uh, Soludo's uh, aspiration to become the governor of Anambra State that the whole hula balu started about leadership. A group of miscreants, that's what I call them, gathered themselves at a hotel, hotel in Abuja here, a motley crowd of not up to 50 persons, and said they held a national, I mean, a, a neck meeting of the party. In the constitution of our party, 2019, it is clear that the national chairman of the party convenes all the meetings of the party, from national working committee meetings 
to national executive committee meetings, to national convention. No other person has the constitutional powers to do so. So whatever assembly they held in Abuja on the 15th of June, 2021, was a mockery of our judicial system, a slap on our democracy. And that was where the whole problem started, the so-called crisis in Africa, when a group of miscreants wanted to hijack the party to stop the, our candidate, Chukuma Soludo, from emerging as a candidate of the party. They have done everything possible to scuttle that ambition. But God is infinite mercy. Did not allow it to materialize. They went to Kano, I mean to Jigawa High Court, Jigawa Brinning Kudu in Jigawa State, and filed a frivolous suit without involving me as the national chairman of the party. Now, Apuga as a party, a judgment was given by Justice Obale, and we challenged that judgment at the Court of Appeal Kano after heated proceedings. On August 10, 2021, the Court of Appeal, Kano, gave its judgment. And this is the judgment here. 108 pages. 108 pages. And as we can see, in the judgment, they say, between all Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, as the appellant, Chief Victor Ike Oye, National Chairman of APGA for himself and on behalf of the members of National Working Committee of APGA, elected on 31st of May 2019. It's very, very clear. That it's not, there's no ambiguity whatsoever here. And in this judgment, it was against between the parties I mentioned, and Alaji Rabiu Garba Aliu, Chief Judo Keke, and Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, as respondents. There is no, there's no Edozi Njoko here, for goodness sake. There's no Edozi Njoko in this judgment, 108 pages. What is happening to our nation? There is no Edozi Njoko here. And in this judgment, I, I want to read a, a, an excerpt from the judgment. Very, very straightforward judgment. He says that all the five issues pleaded in this IP, because I was the appellant, myself, APGA, were the appellant in this judgment, in this case, were the appellant. And he said that all the five issues raised in this appeal have been resolved in favor of the appellant, Victoria and Apuga. So there is nothing here that is ambiguous. It was this judgment that Judo Keke, not even a dozen Joko, Judo Keke went to the Supreme Court to challenge this judgment. And the Supreme Court, in its own judgment, very, very clear. This is the judgment of the Supreme Court. In the judgment is here, Judo Keke and All Progressive Grand Alliance, Apuga, Chivik Tikoye, Rabiu Garabaliu, and Independent National Electoral Commission as respondents. There is no Edozi Njoko here. What are people talking about? There's no Edozi Njoko here. And the judgment, the justices on this panel were Justice Mary Ukego Peter Odile, Justice uh, Kekereku, Justice Mohamed Lawagarba, Ibrahim Musa Mohamed Saulawa, and Emmanuel Akomaye Agim. These were the justices of the Supreme Court. And look at it. Let me read the judgment to you, the excerpt. And this was the military judgment written by Mary Odile. She says, it follows that the entire foundation of this IP collapses 
and therefore no point belaboring the matter any further, as this is an abuse of court process. Hence, this appeal is dismissed. When an appeal is dismissed, it means there is no more life in the appeal. It can never resurrect anywhere at any time. This matter is closed. Nobody can raise it up again. And the only procedure for anybody to amend the judgment of the Supreme Court, or any court for that matter, is through a motion. You have to do a motion. There should be an application. Then there should be a motion. And all the parties in this suit will be involved. It is not proper for a litigant whose name was not on the cause list to write a justice of the Supreme Court, seeking amendment to the judgment of the Supreme Court. It is preposterous as far as we are concerned. And the justice replying a litigant who was not a party to the suit. Is it not preposterous? It's preposterous. I, we do not even believe that Justice Ukego Peter Odele wrote that letter. We are still in doubt and in awe. We do not, we never believed it could happen and we don't believe it happened at all. So what is clear is that the Supreme Court, because we had to take this matter to the police on May 17, 2022, when we saw the handwriting, when we saw the writing on the wall, we went, wrote a petition to the Inspector General of Police to commence an investigation on this matter. And the police went all out to conduct a full-fledged investigation. And the result, they visited INEC, and INEC gave them report of the monitoring, monitoring committee that went to Anambra to conduct our national convention on 31st of May, 2019. They gave the police the report. In that report, my name featured prominently as the national chairman of the party. I was elected there alongside 30 other members of the National Working Committee. See, all of them are here. Some of them are here. Alaji Adamu is here. Uche Nokobu is here. Uh, Ifayim Beri is here. Sly is here. And uh, Chuksa Achusi is here. Edozo Njoku has never shown us a single member of his committee. He does not exist. That is the truth of the matter. The man is a frost. He does not exist. The facts are clear. He came to my office on the 28th, on the 28th of May. 2019, three days to our national convention. According to the text he sent to me, he did not see me in the office, so he wrote a text. I was just going through my phone and I saw the text. The man wrote me, wrote me a text on the 28th of May, 2019, that he came to purchase a form to contest for the national chairman of the party. He did not see me in the office, so he wrote a text. He said he came with a draft of 250,000 Naira. By the 28th of uh, May, 2019, we have closed the sale of forms for all elective offices of, of, in the party. So he didn't have access to any form. He did not participate in any election in, 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 in Apoga on May 31, 2019. So we held the National Convention in Oka at Dora Akunyere International Conference Center. The governor was in attendance. His deputy was in attendance. All the members of the Board of Trustees of the party were there. All the National Working Committee members were there. The state schools of the party were there. All the members of NEC who, who would naturally form membership of the National Convention, everybody was there in Oka. Then in the evening of May 31, 2019, we saw on social media that one day Dozen Njoko has declared himself national chairman of ABGA from a convention in Owere. Is it not ludicrous? 
how can a political party hold the national convention in two cities monitored by INEC? INEC did not monitor any convention in Owere. That is not how INEC works. INEC monitored the national convention of Apoga in Oka, where all the members of the party, 7,782 members were there as members of the national convention. It was at that convention in Oka that I was re-elected. I was the only candidate. I came out and my image unopposed. And other 30 members of the National Working Committee. And we started work immediately. We purchased this office as our first assignment in 2019. This is one office everybody in Nigeria is proud of. Now we are doing a five-story office building in Oka to serve as the regional office of APGA in Nigeria. And it is our vision to replicate what we have in Oka in every region of Nigeria. That is what we call the power of vision. This party has done very, very well. Then suddenly on October, so on October 14, 20. 21. The Supreme Court, as I said earlier, gave its judgment, returning me as the national chairman of the party and dismissing the appeal by Judo Keke. And for your information, there is nobody called Judo Keke. The Judo Keke we knew died in 2017. It comes from Enugu State. So all these people are fraudsters. The way they operate is unimaginable. That is why the security agencies must dig into this and stop this, these shenanigans. Because we must do something to save this country. This country is the only country we have. We should not allow miscreants, you know, to take over the running of our social system. Our laws must come into play. This is a nation of laws, a nation of constitutionality. We should not allow uh, political non-entities to take over the political firmament of our nation. Nigeria is a respected nation. The world looks up to Nigeria as the most populous country in Africa to produce good results, produce men and women of integrity. That is what we need in this country. And that is what our party, Abga, stands for. If you come to our secretariat here as a national party, we have been able to structure the party is now on a seamless motion to the apogee of its development. We have structured the party very well. We have our IT center here. During the primaries, APGA came out tops. We conducted the primaries across Nigeria with integrity, with accountability, with a sense of duty and professionalism. And the records are there. We beat all the deadlines set by INEC. So we don't know what is happening. We, we heard that somebody wrote a letter, a, justice, a retired justice wrote a letter to the Supreme, to one Edozi and Joko. For goodness sake, how can a retired justice, or even though her position is functus official, how could a, 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 former, a former justice of the Supreme Court write a letter to a litigant, an individual, who was not even a party in the cost list? Not a party. I've shown you the judgment of the Court of Appeal from where the appeal at the Supreme Court emanated. And the judgment, you can see my name there, Victor Yanai Apga. There was no dozen joke here for goodness sake. And police have concluded the investigation. And they have found all the people involved here culpable. A dozen joko from the police investigation, there are 12 count charges against the man, 12 counts, which I will show you here. And the case is already in court in the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, in the Abuja Judicial Division holding at Abuja, between the Inspector General of Police, complainant, versus the Dozi Njoko and Chukwebeka Mwag accused. The case is already in court. 
What we are waiting for is arraignment. These people have to be arraigned to face justice. So the man does not exist, and the Supreme Court, in its own reputal, which was released on the 1st of September, disowned the, the, the so-called judgments that the Doze Joko forged and is parading. They disowned it. It's very, very clear. It's in the whole media. And the, the conclusion of it is it's very, very clear. It says, in view of the foregoing, we wish to make it abundantly clear that the judgment of this honorable court, which is the Supreme Court of Nigeria, contained only the parties listed above, and that Chief Edozi Njoku was not added as a party at any point. That is the Supreme Court. So why are we talking, what are we talking about, for goodness sake? Making unnecessary furore, unnecessary hulabalo over nothing. This is a very peaceful political party. We are focused. We have 1.5 million members across Nigeria. And this is one of the first political parties to submit a detailed list of its membership to INEC. Physical copy, what we call the electronic copy and the hard copy. We sent it to INEC. We have also submitted to INEC a comprehensive list of our officers from world level to national level. Is there with INEC, the electronic copy and the, the hard copy. This shows you that we are focused. We are not even distracted by the activities of our detractors. We are focused. By this time next year, my successor would have done four or five months in office. My tenure will end next year, June next year. I would have completed my second term in office of eight years. God has been propitious to us. Abga has continued to sow like the ego. We have continued to run the affairs of the party prudently, professionally, accountably. The records are there to show. Every couple we made from all activities of the party was paid into the account of the party. So it is very, very easy to assess our account. APGA was audited by INEC auditors. They just completed the exercise in September. And they turned out the results to INEC. Very beautiful report. Since I came into office, we have always been audited since 2015. So our records are clear. We do not know why people should continue to cause disaffection. What is happening in APGA? It's like the voice of Jacob and the hand of Esau. That is what is happening in Africa. People from outside are remotely causing disaffection in the party for their selfish interests. But we are focused. We are not distracted. We will continue to do our best to give democracy in Nigeria, some level of decency through our activities, through our operations. We are focused, uh, we have the best team in this country on, our, on my NWC. These are dedicated men and women who are committed to the growth and development of the party. And our members are all over Nigeria. We are ready with our campaign council. The list is ready. In the last count, we had about 2,150 members of the campaign council, excluding members from each state of the federation that will constitute the various state councils or campaign councils of the party. So we are working very, very hard. And very soon, our presidential candidate will unveil the membership of his campaign council. And our operations for the election 2023 will come into full swing. We are not, we are, we are unfazed by the activities of our detractors. All they are planning is to distract us from 2023 election. But their plans have already failed because Abga is on a supersonic speed. Anybody standing before the train will be crushed. That is the truth of the matter. 
We are men and women of justice and integrity. We conduct ourselves diligently, conduct ourselves with the fear of God and love of our neighbor. But anybody who tries our, 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 who tries our patience we get it very, very rough because we are focused. Nobody can distract us. We are ready for the 2023 election, and we are going to square it out with the leading political parties in Nigeria with our manifesto. Our manifesto is very, very clear. It's welfareist in nature, focused on the people, to produce a government that will give succor to our people. Our people, when I talk about people, I talk about Nigerians. Nigerians are hungry, Nigerians are sick, Nigerians are defenseless. It is an Afghan government that will relieve them of these burdens. We are ready to give them the best in governance. Our presidential candidate, Pitu Mahdi, retired justice of the chief judge of Anambra State and life bencher. It's a man that has all it takes to lead this country. We are focused as a people. We want to deliver the dividends of democracy to our people in the 36 states of the Federation. We fielded candidates in almost every position in Nigeria. And we are ready to go. Nobody can distract us. The list of our candidates have been published by INEC and well received by the people of Nigeria. So we plead Nigerians using this opportunity to continue to stand behind our party. ABGA is the only political party in Nigeria with a clear-cut ideology. While other parties are hemorrhaging, ABGA is the only political party in Nigeria with a clear bill of health. And that is why we are very confident about the forthcoming election. We are ready to cooperate with our people, cooperate with people of like mind to take our party our nation to the apogee of development. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we're ready to take questions from you. Thank you. Yes, um, yes, uh, National Chairman, uh, um, we will want you to respond to a few questions from our colleagues. I will, I'm from uh, this day newspapers. I would like you also to answer my questions as, uh, as follows. Um, Abga, we know, have been in the business, in this business for many years, since 1999. But um, somehow, it has only recorded um, formidable success in the southeast part of the country. People have been waiting to see how Abga will turn its electoral success in the southeast into a national uh, one, in which case, it, Abga will be seen to be winning the election in other parts of the country. With 2023 around the corner, what is your perspective on this? Will you say that we are having an Abga that will take Nigerians by surprise by winning um, in many other parts of the country? Uh, I think uh, I was very clear in my speech about our readiness and preparedness for the 2023 elections. Every political party goes into the election to win. We're not going into the elections to lose. And let me make a quick correction. Abuga is not uh, an Anambra party in terms of achievements. Abuga is a national party. And let me give you the records of our achievements electorally. In 2015, we won election into, into uh, Bayelsa House of Assembly, two seats in Bayelsa House of Assembly. We won three seats in the House of Reps in Benue. We won five councillorship seats in Niger State. We won Guagualada Municipal Area Council Chairmanship with seven out of ten councillors in 2016. We won House of Reps, one seat House of Reps and one House of Assembly in Taraba State. 
we won 13 seats in the Imo House of Assembly. I mean, uh, Abia House of Assembly, and six seats in the Imo State House of Assembly. We won Rijao Magama House of Reps in Niger State. Two councilorship seats in Kaduna State. We won two national two chairmanship seats. But the governor of, Can of Kaduna said, no way. What would I tell the president? That Africa has won elections in Kaduna State. So they did not award the, the two seats to us. So this is the growth of APGA. APGA is a party to beat in 2023. And we are ready for the elections. Trusting God, we are going to perform beautifully. Our candidate is here from Benue. He's here, governorship candidate, Joseph Wire. Don't add the S because it will turn to Wire. It's, this is Joseph Wire. And he's making waves in Benue State. In fact, he's the man to take over the seat of governance seat of government in Makurudi in 2023. It's here in full, full blood. And we thank Nigerians for their support to our party. This is the only party in the whole world that has a global brand. Abge is a global brand because our file, this file you see here, is Kokoroko. It's always our life. It is the cock that wakes you up every morning. It wakes up on your chair works up on your G, wherever you come from, people listen to the voice of the cock, the crow of the cock. So crow of the cock. So we are ready for the elections. And I, I want to appeal to Nigerians to trust Abga. Abga will bring salvation to Nigeria. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so My name is Dili Omoyeni from Channels Television. A number of questions. Firstly, uh, there's news making rounds that Mr. Njoku indeed tried to get a form but he wasn't given that form. He wasn't allowed to purchase the form. And so that's why he had to go the other route. He, he alleged that he wanted to be the unopposed uh, candidate in that uh, election. That's the first question. The second question is that uh, during the last elections in Anambra State, you were uh, quoted to have said that Abga has structures across the entire uh, Anambra State, and that's why it's going to win that election. What you're saying now that your party is going to win uh, the presidential elections next year. But the truth is that you don't quite have that structure across the country. I mean, when, when it comes to st structures, we were talking about governors in the states, senators across the country. So how do you want to win an election without uh, those things in place? And then lastly, uh, what's the situation uh, as regards the um, uh, investigation of the police on what you say about a Supreme Court justice writing Mr. Njoku, is the police investigating this matter and what's uh, the outcome of that investigation? Thank you. Anybody, your questions are straightforward. You answer the second question by yourself. So there's nobody answering it. You asked and answered it. So I don't need to answer that again. Then for the first question, you said that the Dose Njoku alleges or alleged that he came to purchase from, but he didn't purchase. It was not allowed to purchase. I told you that I showed you, I, I will show you a text he sent to me. Okay? In that text, 28th of May, somebody who wanted to contest for chairmanship of the party will come three days to Prama, to, to convention. It's never done anywhere. You understand what I'm saying? It was an afterthought. He never wanted to contest anything. He wanted to hold on something to start his present uh, activities. But the truth of the matter is that the man, OK, let me now ask you a question. Do two wrongs make a right? He didn't purchase any form. Fine. Did that confer on him the national chairmanship of the party? I'm asking you. It does not. What the man is doing is sheer illegality. And what bothers me is why our judicial system, our security system, has continued to allow him to operate unfettered. This is a nation of laws. This kind of thing cannot happen anywhere outside the shores of this country. It cannot. Where somebody, one, a dozen in Joko, has no bearing anywhere in the party. Have you forgotten that the same a dozen in Joko in 2021, during the Anambra ship governorship, attempted to contest for governorship of Anambra State. This is a man from Mbisel in Imo State. 
How do you reconcile that? Then he was a governorship candidate, aspirant, in, and after today is the national chairman. Can't you reason? If I were the security agencies, I can bet you this man will be in the cell now, 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 not more than one minute from now. Because what, what goes around comes around. It is Abga today. Who knows what will happen tomorrow? It could be your turn tomorrow. Don't forget that Galatians chapter 6 verse it says, do not be deceived. Nobody can mock God. For whatever a man or woman so that he or she shall reap, he will reap where wind. Now he knows he will reap it. He is looking at me as an ordinary person. I'm not ordinary. I'm a child of God with full anointing. The only thing that will save him from the wrath of God is for him to repent. He will face the music of God. God will play the music and he will dance to it. It is very certain. So your questions have been answered. A dozen joko, you talked about a guy in Anambra State, whether we have capacity. Your view about Apoga winning the election at the federal level was also a jundized view. Very, very egocentric. How can you be judging the party, telling us whether we're going to win election or not? You work in China. Do you know the spread of the party? You don't even have the capacity to make such an imputation. But I forgive you because the Bible says, if somebody sins and comes and confesses, you forgive you. I forgive you for ignorance. Apoga is not a local party. Apoga, we are going to win the election in 2023. You see it now. I know you'll be wondering how it's going to happen. Don't forget that it is God that makes kings. Whoever has the anointing to become president, God will make him president of Nigeria. No man can decide for God who will rule Nigeria. It's only God that will decide it. Did anybody anticipate that Buhari was going to win in 2015? He won, and one second term. People thought he would have died. He didn't die. God kept him alive for a purpose. Today is almost completing his ten tenure. Let Nigerians begin to appreciate the awesomeness of God. The God we serve is a living God. All my hope and trust is in him. What God cannot do for me, let it be. God has taken me so far where I am today. We have led the party with passion and love. And God has been propitious to our supplications. He will never abandon us at our hours of need. I want to make appeal to you, my brother. When you ask questions, ask questions with human mind, with compassion. Don't let nobody teleguide you or make you think uh, anyhow. This party is our party. It's the people's party. It's not against you. After all, we patronize you, channels, and you're asking me such a question. Yeah? I have three questions, sir. You said um, that your party has 1.5 million registered voters across Nigeria. And one will wonder how you tend to win a national election with that figure when the other two parties boast of 15 million registered voters across Nigeria. That's one. You said the crisis in your party is a case of the voice of Jacob and the hand of Esau. So who is the Jacob and who is the Esau? Because this is not a Bible class. Nigerians want to know who you are referring to. Then lastly, sir, you, you've seen the letter written, allegedly written by Justice Peter um, Mary Odili, retired. In the event that INEC decides to give life to the content of that letter and recognizes Njoku's faction, what would you do? Thank There's you. No faction, man. At least, by my understanding, there is, sir. Thank you. cannot give life. You don't give life to a dead person now. <laughs> Have you forgotten that the Supreme Court said this matter dismissed and the appeal dismissed? When something is dismissed, it's dead. You can't give life to a dead person. And you cannot give life to somebody who does not exist. A dozen joker does not exist. Let him show us the INEC monitoring team report about his so-called convention. He doesn't have. The man does not exist. I want you to appreciate this now. It seems you don't understand. It does not exist. 
I've said all I could say about that. There are about 1.5 million persons, membership of our members of our party. We are very honest people. We don't bandy figures. And I can tell you, no political party in Nigeria gave 15 million uh, uh, members. No party. Show me the evidence. It's not possible. It's not possible. And by the way, I gave you 1.5 million members. Did that take, give you the admirers, the supporters of the party? I didn't tell you that. And so <laughs> you get it. That's how elections are won. Elections are won are not won by membership of the party on record or register. No. There are people who believe that on that day they will vote for uh, this particular candidate, irrespective of party I, 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 uh, affiliation. It, it, I've been forgotten. So forget figures. I just gave you the correct figures, what is in our register. I would have told you we have 20 million people. They were others clear. But I wouldn't do that. We stand for the truth. And it is only the truth that can set you free. So about uh, uh, prosecuting the, other, the woman, the, the, the justice you talked about, it is not our duty to do that. You are not in the words of Jacob and the hand of this. Okay, then you want me to show you the, who, the hand of this. You have to do that. What is investigative journalism? Have you been the one to tell you that? I've not given you. I've not given you a clue to help you get the scoop that will sell you a paper. Okay. Uh, 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 good afternoon, National Chairman. My name is Victor Sinag Benson. I report for Radio Nigeria. Some of us uh, know the trajectory of uh, Abga. I, I'm, I'm wondering, um, what is the uh, relationship of the current leadership of the party and the heritage of Abga? I'm talking about uh, the Ojuku lineage and even the founding national chairman, uh, Chief Chekwa Sokore, and all that. Because in uh, situations of uh, disagreements of this nature, parties always uh, reach out to such reservoirs to resolve them. Thank you. Uh, when you talk about reaching out to people to resolve, you, you, you don't build something on nothing and expect it to stand. What are we resolving? You have to resolve what? Someone who does not exist. If this is, you are not listening to me. I said the man you are talking about, doesn't joke, does not exist in the eye of the law. It does not exist. Because it doesn't have any legality it doesn't have any constitutionality to stand, to lay any claim to the office of national chairman. Are you not here? Can't you see the office? Did you see the effect of a dozen joker around here? I don't know if you are, I don't know, you are a journalist. I'm a journalist as well. Can't you be objective in your reporting? Did you see any element of Njoko here? Njoko said he has been his national chairman. Where is his office? Is he laying claim to my own office, the office I built, I set up? Amadio here will kill him. Amadio We strike him dead. Let me tell you what you do not know. You cannot lay claim to what is not your own. It is thievery. Don't you know it's thievery? That man should be arrested to produce evidence of ownership. You want to come and claim a structure you did not build. You come and sit on this seat. That day you will die on this, in this seat. He will die that if he sits on this seat, he will die. What me? Because, excuse me, let me tell you something. Allow me to talk. This is my time. Did you pay for it? Yes, let him understand. I'm on national TV, so keep and listen to me. What I'm saying is that, you cannot, it's not like somebody coming now and telling you that your wife is no longer your wife, it's the husband of your wife. Would you yeah. accept it? If you have a knife, you cut off his head, sir. then we go to court and decide it. This structure here was built by the escort of Africa, this present regime, led by me, this one. Everything here was bought by our team. Where is a dozen joke in all of this? Do you know? Let me give you some information. A dozen joke forged court documents, went to Bochi to ambush us. He brought the lawyer for Apoga, brought the lawyer for himself. 
He went to Toboji. Unfortunately for him, when the judge looked at the day of judge, the judge looked at this and said, ah, which type of case is this? Nobody's opposing anything. Everybody's agreeing, agreeing, agreeing. The man said no. He recused himself and directed that this case file be transferred to the federal chief chief uh, judge of the Federal High Court to reassign to another law, judge. And it was reassigned to Justice A.R. Mohammed about the chairmanship of Abgal. By 6th of April this year, Justice A.R. Mohammed gave his judgment and dismissed the Dozen Joko suit. What are we talking about? The same man took our case one slide, is, our slide is okay, my national legal advice is here. Filed a suit at Oka, and the suit, a doctor doctor appealed against it at uh, Court of Appeal, Abuja. The Court of Appeal, Abuja, dismissed the Dozier Joku suit again. So all over, it has been failure, 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 failure. Because you cannot build something on nothing and expect it to stand. That is just the truth of the matter. It's a trite in law. I've told you people that this man does not exist. If at all he was able to one go his way, remember, he, 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 he forged the documents of the Supreme Court. Judgment, he forged it. And the Supreme Court came up with a statement dismissing the, all the judgments he was parading and declared that I'm, I'm the only party to that suit. I'm the rightful person. What he did was to remove my name from the cost list and insert his own name. That is forgery. And he's still walking, uh, walking the streets, a free man, and nobody has harassed him. The security agencies have left him to walk about unfettered. That shouldn't happen in a democratic and legal society. So this is where the press comes in. Let nobody be pushing you about. I'm a journalist. During my days as a journalist, they say facts are sacred. When you get the fact, stand by the fact. Don't be bamboozled by anybody. I don't know why money plays a big role now. Nobody wants to stand for the truth. I might work for NTA. Uh, I would also want to know from the last statement you made, you said uh, fast are sacred and comments are free. I would want to know this uh, Edusian joke who you've been mentioning from your last um, um, explanations, you say he doesn't exist. But I would want to know, as a matter of fact, was he once a member of APCA in the first instance? Was he a member, a member of your party? If he was, or if he is, as the case may be, I know before this situation escalated to the extent of him maybe approaching the court or going to uh, seek uh, legal redress or whatever, he may have maybe complained or brought his complaints if he did to your party. Then if he did, did your party utilize all the uh, internal party mechanism of resolving issues to look at his case before it goes to this level? Thank you. Anyway, what you just did now, you didn't ask any question. You only did an advocacy. Advocacy for a dozen joko. Very simple thing. I'd expected you to ask a straight question. Uh, about membership of the party, as we speak, a dozen joko is not a member of APGA. He used to be a member of APGA, but it's not. And something will surprise you now. Since I was born, and now that I'm getting old, I've never met a dozen in Joko. In person, we've never met. It's on record. We've never met. He has never come to me as his national chairman, if he's a member of our party. I don't know him as one. And that's why I say he does not exist. He does not exist. The man has not complained to anybody. I told you that all he did was to send a text to me that they wanted to buy, purchase form when the selling of forms had closed. That's just the truth of the matter. Let him show you any evidence. One evidence. Let me give you an example. Let him show you one. Anything that gave legitimacy to his claim as national chairman. One. He does not have a single one. 
all the suits he filed in court against Apoga. He lost all of them. And there is no court in Nigeria today that has said anything against my leadership as national chairman of Abuja. No court has removed me in Nigeria. Not a single proclamation. That's what I'm talking about. I want the world to listen to me. People I'm speaking to have, they're discernible. They have discernible minds. You should be able to look at what I'm saying. Let him call it, I challenge in Joku today, let him call a press conference and tell the world, see you. I instituted this suit from high court to Supreme Court, and I won the suit. Let me show you one. Let him also show you evidence that he held a national convention by giving you INEC monitoring committee's report. He doesn't have any. It is their style. That is how they operate. You know, fraudsters have a style. They have a way of operating. They lay claim to what is not their own. That's how they do it. You start struggling it with them. Your own legitimate thing, you, know, you start struggling with them. It's a horrible situation. But I thank God for everything. God has been propitious to us. God has been kind to us. As we were talking, our, our presidential candidate stepped in. Justice uh, Peter Umadi is here. Please focus on him one of the greatest uh, Nigerians, a legal luminary, former chief judge of Anambra State, a life bencher, and uh, an indefatigable defender of the truth. He has traversed every nook and cranny of Nigeria, selling his uh, manifesto. You are welcome, autopsy of Ibo land. Thank you, National Chairman of Africa. Welcome. You're welcome. You. We wish you well. Wish you well. By, by May 29th, we will emerge the president of Nigeria, inshallah, 2023. Yes. Uh, General, sir, finally, do you think that uh, 2023 election will be peaceful? Uh, I'm a human being now. I'm not God. It is only God that knows what will happen tomorrow. How can you ask me about whether it will be peaceful? We just said that we pray the election will be peaceful. It's prayer. And as an individual, I believe that God is on the throne. He will give us peace. We need peace in Nigeria. We don't need anybody to die. Government must create jobs for our teeming population of youth who have no jobs. Government must provide security. Without security, you can't have good election. Yesterday, the office of INEC in Ogun State was bombed. Why? Why? All this is will go back to government. You will use scarce resources to restore what have been bombed. So let our people wear their thinking caps and restore peace to our nation. Nigeria is a great nation. I've traveled wide and wide, far and near. I've never seen a country as blessed as Nigeria. What we need in Nigeria is social justice, justice for all, where offices, resources are distributed equitably. That's what we need in Nigeria. We need peace in Nigeria. I'm confident as a human being that 2023 elections will be peaceful. And it's an opportunity for Nigerians to choose the best. They should not pander to undue emotionalism and choose the wrong people. Because all about politics and the election is whatever you saw is what you read. So let Nigerians shine their eyes, as people will say, and vote in the best. The man we have here, Justice Umadi, to me is the best, intellectually and otherwise, is the best. So let Nigerians go for the best and not uh, subject themselves to undue emotionalism, you know, before making their final decisions. I thank you for listening, and I pray God in his infinite mercy to bless Nigeria, Amen. to bless Apuga, and to bless, bless the whole world, and restore peace to our nation. God bless you.